What's up guys? Welcome back to the garage. Uh, today I've got a uh, really cool little package to show you. And this one comes from a buddy from uh, the local Subaru club that I'm in. Peter at uh, Humble Rumble has come up with probably the most ingenious way to solve the uh, Subaru firewall crack, clutch creak, clicking issue. You can probably do it in an hour or under an hour if you're quick at it, but uh, you know, one to two hours to fix your cracked firewall um, without removing the dash. And yeah, I guess if you're not uh, aware or you're new to Subarus, um, the uh, thin firewall issue basically affects um, 2008 to 14 um, WRX STIs Impreza, pretty much every model. Um, I've even seen reports of um, newer, like 2019 Outbacks having the same issue. And it all stems from uh, a thin, thin firewall that uh, Subaru decided to use and then mount the uh, clutch bracket and everything to it. So over time, uh, Sometimes not even over time. Sometimes people have reported day one, car's brand new, they drive it away and the clutch is squeaking and creaking. And that's basically because your uh, firewall right here is flexing and there's pieces of metal that are rubbing together and there's a bracket in there that's also rubbing. And uh, it's super annoying. And uh, at least in Canada, I don't think I don't think Subaru has any fix for it. I don't think they've um, uh, I don't think they've extended any warranties like that. At least in the states, there was a class action lawsuit filed against Subaru to uh, try to remedy remedy this or get it fixed, but. Um, as far as I know in Canada, if you go to Subaru with this issue, they tell you uh, they don't hear the sound, they don't know what you're talking about, they can't find any issues with the firewall, but um, if you look under the cowl, there's some uh, spot welds there that are either already cracked or you can see them, um, you can see them uh, deformed and little spaces in the firewall. You can even see the uh, master cylinder flexing. So. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a known issue and it's, it's really shitty. So people have resorted to welding the firewall back together, uh, using rivets, using nuts and bolts, which is pretty much what this method is. But, uh, if you use a conventional nut and bolt, you have to take out the whole dash, um, so you can hold it on the other side. So that's where this kit is, uh, Super, super ingenious, and yeah, I'm pretty excited to get it installed. You've probably seen it. Uh, tons of companies out there make support braces like Perrin, and uh, I guess uh, Circuit Motorsports would be probably the most beefy mount to sort of brace your master cylinder against the firewall. But uh, if you've already got your, or if you've already got cracks in your firewall, it's basically just a uh, sort of a band-aid and not a real fix and uh, so potentially even doing this uh, this way to fix the firewall that Peter's come up with and then including a firewall brace or a master cylinder brace um, will be probably the ultimate solution to eliminating any flex and also solving the issue of the cracked, uh, cracked welds. So Peter sells this kit in uh, basically two options. Uh, the first option is just the hardware itself, uh, which comprises of a, I'm not exactly sure what you call it, but there's a spring washer, a nut, this nut that's been red Loctited on, and then this hollow uh, sort of bolt with a hex end on it. And that's kind of the ingenious part is that uh, because this is hollow, you can use uh, this wire or something that you have laying around to basically fish the fastener through 
um, from the uh, outside of the car and which means you don't have to take your dash out so this is gonna save a ton of time so that's basically one way you can buy this kit and then he also sells uh, the accessory pack uh, for an additional cost obviously um, which includes the proper size drill bit which is a uh, 1332 seconds um, this wire to help you fish the bolts through red Loctite um, just a little small one to uh, fasten these guys uh, fasten these guys on once you fish these through and then uh, a little box of uh, sealer to seal uh, the hole in the middle here and around just from uh, any moisture that could potentially get through um, so of course if you have all this stuff uh, you don't need to buy it and you can save yourself a bit of money but uh, if you don't and you don't want to run around trying to find this stuff uh, he sells it all in one and makes it super easy so the uh, tool list for this is very basic um, what you're gonna need are a pair of side cutters um, that'll be for cutting the wire um, you'll need a ratchet with a 14 mil socket and an extension uh, this will be for removing your windshield wipers you'll need a number two Phillips screwdriver uh, I find this short uh, stubby one works well for just uh, twisting off the clips that hold the plastic cowl on you'll of course need a drill you may need a uh, little clip picker uh, tool here uh, you may even want a center punch uh, of course with a hammer and possibly even a smaller drill bit to drill a uh, pilot hole for your 13 30 seconds uh, drill bit here but um, yeah all you're gonna need here are pretty much basic hand tools that um, anybody who works on cars or even people who don't probably have in their garage so before starting any project that you uh, haven't done before, it's always a good idea to consult the instruction manual and uh, Peter does a good job of laying out how this all goes down. Um, basically you want to, you can mark your wiper position so they're easier to uh, reassemble uh, later. Remove the wipers after uh, marking their position, remove the cowling and then unbolt the wiper assembly that's located under the cowling and uh, locate the six spot welds. Um, so it is important to note here that uh, you want to make sure that um, at least two of the spot welds are still intact. Um, uh, that means uh, that uh, if at least two are still intact then the bracket on the inside of the car is should still be in the proper position but um, if they're all completely cracked it may have shifted and may not be in the right spot so this might be a little bit more of a difficult install that way but um, yeah if you take all this cowling off and everything and see that uh, the majority of your spot welds are still intact then uh, you should be good to go and uh, yeah first things first uh, you want to mark the positions of the wipers and remove these nuts that uh, secure the wipers on here. There's a plastic cover that looks like this. You can usually get your fingers under it and just pull it right off and that exposes the nut and that will be a 14. And then to get the cowling off you have these uh, screw type clips here so you just loosen these and then uh, pop them out. And there's several located along the uh, length of this. So that should be pretty easy. We'll get to that and then we'll move on to the next step.
right guys, so the cowl is off and we have our wiper motor exposed. And uh, we'll actually need a 10 mil socket. So hopefully you haven't lost any of yours. Um, so there's one fastener here, one fastener here, and one here. And uh, that should free up the wiper assembly and you'll be able to see the uh, spot welds behind it. And of course, you've got an electrical connection here. That just pops off like that. So I guess one thing to note here is that um, to get the cowl off, you'll have these trim pieces located up here and they are a bit tricky to get out. They've got uh, clips right here that clip into the larger cowl piece that goes across as well as a few on the side here and as you can see uh, a couple of mine broke off so um, yeah definitely be careful when you're removing this um, otherwise you'll have to order some new ones um, the one side came out okay but uh, I will definitely have to order a new one here um, usually stuff like this isn't too expensive from the dealership so not too worried about that but um, yeah, we'll move on. We'll get rid of the, or uh, we'll remove the wiper motor and I'll show you where the uh, spot welds are. Now with the wiper assembly out of the way, uh, we can get a look at our spot welds here. And they might be a little bit difficult to see, but I'll just use a blue Sharpie here and highlight them. So we've got one here, one here, one here, and one here. And then, let's see if I can, maneuver this and tucked up under the windshield you've got one here and one here for a total of six so kind of looks like that and what we're going to want to do here is uh Start this one at a time. So we'll drill out one spot weld, install the nut and bolt, torque to spec, and then we'll move on to the next one. We don't want to drill all these out because there is a bracket on the other side being held up. Um, so uh, do this one at a time. So the instructions say that if you have any obviously broken spot welds to start with those ones first. Um, it doesn't appear that I have any that are actually cracked right through, but these two are, uh, or seem to be more pulled away than the other four. So probably gonna start with these two. And I'm gonna actually just center punch these with this and then drill a pilot hole before actually going to the full size drill bit. You don't have to do that. Uh, the instructions don't mention to do that, but uh, this is just the way I like to do things. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. And I'll probably just start with this one right here. So when you do start drilling these out, it's important to note that there's about one to two inches of clearance behind the firewall. So when you drill this out, go slow and uh, try really hard not to force the drill bit through because there might be electric electrical components or something else behind there that you might nick. Um, so it's important to just be careful when you uh, start drilling through here.
Now we've got our first hole drilled here and uh, you can kind of see in there just how close, I think that's a piece of foam or something, but uh, just how close that is back in there. So definitely be careful when you're drilling it. But uh, now that we've got that done, we'll move over here and uh, we'll grab our wire and we'll feed it into the hole. And then we'll take one of our bolts here and we'll fish it back through and then we'll tighten it from the outside here and uh, should be fairly straightforward. It might be a little bit tricky just uh, fishing the bolt up through around uh, some components, but uh, yeah, let's get to that. Let's see here. So try to get this nice and straight and fish it down into the hole. Trying to find a clear spot. Might have to go into the car, kind of get a visual on where it's coming out. So it looks like I'm poking this through a crappy little spot. So this might take a couple tries um, each time you fish in the wire through a new spot uh, to get a clear path to pull the bolt through. So we'll just do that here quickly. And um, once I get that in, I'll show you how to fasten your nut and bolt to the end of it so we can pull it through. Okay, so now I've got uh, my wire fed through the car um, with a pretty clear path to fish this uh, nut and bolt uh, back through the firewall. So I'll just show you how, um, how we're gonna thread this on. Um, of course, you'd be doing this inside the car, but uh, it's easier to show you outside of the car. So um, obviously these fasteners have a hole in them. So what you're gonna wanna do is uh, feed this through. Actually, I'll show you like this so it's easier. So this will be this side will be inside the car. Um, you're gonna put your nut and bolt on this way and then just figure some way, you could even do it like that, just to keep this from falling off. <clears throat> and then you're essentially, you're gonna pull this through so that pops out like that um, into the engine bay. And then you're gonna slide the lock washer on, or sorry, not the lock washer, but uh, uh, this uh, spring washer. It'll go down like this. Um, as you can see, there's a bit of a dish to it. So we'll put it down this way and then we'll put our nut on. Then we'll apply uh, some Loctite to this uh, red Loctite and torque it down and that will be our first fastener done. So uh, pretty basic uh, install. We almost got it on that one, but there is a piece of foam right back here. So I don't know if I can actually jiggle that through or I might have to uh, push it back down and maybe try to get that foam out of the way with a little hook tool. But um, that's essentially it. We're almost there. We've almost got the first one in. Thank you. 
Okay, so finally got this uh, this one in. It was a little bit of a pain in the ass, um, but that's just because um, I think it's gonna be a problem for this one as well, but there's carpet behind here. So when you go to pull this through, it kind of half blocks the hole, so this doesn't really wanna come through. Um, but basically, kind of did the same thing that uh, Peter did in his install video was that uh, I put tension on this and kind of just wrapped it around here. Um, you could have somebody else pull this for you and then just get in the car and kind of just tug the carpet back just a little bit and then that'll allow this to slide up and be uh, seated flush against the back of the firewall there. So. Um, if you run into that problem, that's exactly what's happening. So we'll make sure to keep a little bit of tension on this uh, wire just so our fastener doesn't fall through. And we'll go ahead and slide the spring washer on uh, with the dome side, I guess, up, kind of like this. And it's pretty easy to tell because the side you want up has these little um, kind of grooves on the top there. And then uh, Go ahead, slide that nut on. And we'll just tighten it like that for now because we want to apply the red Loctite before we actually tighten it down. So even though the kit does come, or the accessory kit does come with uh, some red Loctite, I'm just gonna use uh, this Permatex gel just because I've had a little bit more success with it. And uh, as obviously doesn't tend to drip when it's uh, a gel, so it's good for more vertical fasteners. So now that we've got uh, some of the red Loctite onto a few threads there, go ahead and tighten this down. So final torque on this is uh, about 20 foot pounds. Um, it's pretty easy to do without a torque wrench, but if you wanna be super precise, um, you can use a crow foot kind of, uh, a crow foot wrench on this and tighten it down with a, with a, uh, what the hell is it? A torque wrench <laughs> and, uh, and be good, but I'm just gonna, kind of eyeball this and uh, just tighten it down until I feel like it's tight enough. And the reason that we needed uh, wire cutters as part of our um, tools that we'll need is because we basically, since this is fastened now on both sides, we're just gonna snip this wire and uh, let it fall through onto the floor inside the car. Then we can hold the center stud um, uh, from turning uh, with an Allen key while we tighten this nut down. So one thing you want to avoid when you're tightening this down is actually spinning the centerpiece rather than tightening the nut. There we go, it seems plenty tight. And basically there you go, that's what you've got. Um, or that's your final sort of setup here. Now we'll just repeat this uh, five more times.
Okay, now that we've got uh, all six of these installed, we'll take the supplied silicone and we'll just fill in each of these holes. Also do a little bit around and about a quarter inch radius around the washer just to make sure everything's sealed up. Once you've finished up sealing up the holes with the silicone, uh, you're going to want to wait uh, 24 hours before getting this wet just so it has time to seal up and uh, harden up a little bit. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, just got to reassemble the wiper assembly and put the cowl on and whatnot. But yeah, that's it. Super simple install and definitely a good fix for uh, fixing up spot welds on your firewall. So there you have it. That's the install of the Humble Rumble firewall fix. Um, it's super, super easy. It's great value. It's much cheaper than buying a firewall brace, but uh, yeah, I'll leave links down below in the description for where you can get this. And uh, if you're local to uh, BC, um, it'll be cool to support a local uh, Subaru club member by uh, picking up this kit. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.